cordon up. The, ca the captives were put under the supervision. Uh, something that continued. Okay. Is this okay that it would will be recorded? We didn't oh, ask. Fine. Yeah, there was just okay. something that was blocking the thing. Yeah. The captives were put under the supervision of civilian workers and prisoner foremen. The SS cordoned off the perimeter to avoid escapes. Soon, a typhus epidemic broke out. The 120 prisoners who became ill with the disease were sent to Auschwitz where they were murdered. Hundreds more were transported to Blachhammer from other camps. Among them was Karl Demra, age 40, who arrived on March 24th, 1942. As stated, Demra was appointed by the Germans as the Juden Altesta or camp elder. In June 1942, the remaining prisoners were moved to a new, larger Blechhammer camp, camp that had been built nearby. The new camp was populated primarily by Jews from Upper Silesia. Demra retained his position as camp elder. The prisoners in Blachhammer were housed in wooden barracks under dreadful conditions. Some 200 female Jewish prisoners were put in a separate section of the camp. All prisoners wore standard blue and white striped uniforms. At Blachhamma, the author's future parents, Joseph Gluckstein and Mimi Rubin, who arrived in September 1942 and April 1943 respectively, forged a friendship with Carl Demera. Carl Demera. Carl Demera was born on June 10th, 1901 in Vienna to Marcus and Fan, Fanny, formerly Steinberg, Demra. About 1928, Karl married Henja Graunbaum and settled in Susnovik, Poland. Karl and Henja had two children, a daughter, Helena, and a son, Heinrich. In 1940, Demra, a bank official was arrested by the Germans with some hundred Jews in Susnavik. Demra went through the Zwang Arbeitslager or forced labor camps of Gutensdorf, Rogal, Annaberg, and Atmuth. From Atmuth, Demra was sent to the Blachama concentration camp, named Juden Altesta or Camp Elder. It was on the transport to Blachama that Demra was appointed by a SD man, a member of the SS intelligence department, as the Juden Altesta or Camp Elder. Demra described what ensued. Quote, talking to me, he found out that I spoke a correct German. You will become Juden Altesta and you will be responsible for the camp. He requested my daily reporting of the lists of sick prisoners and those working. As camp elder, Demra also, on many occasions, went to the camp administration and spoke on behalf of the inmates. In 1942, prisoners in Blachhammer were guarded by German order police or Ordnungs, Ordnungs 
Polizei, which were uniformed police agencies of the Third Reich and police veterans under the command of the higher SS and police leader of Silesia, Ernst Heinrich Schnauzer. Eric Hoffman, a civilian employee of the RAB, notorious for brutally maltreating inmates, was in charge of the Blackhammer camp administration. Demra became acquainted with the camp supervisor, a SS Hauptsturmführer named Ludwig, who showed him some kindness. One day, Ludwig asked Demra if he could help him with anything. Demra told him he wished to write a letter to his wife, who was in the Sasnowit ghetto, and get some news from her. Ludwig told Demra to write the letter and she would get it. Quote, he took the letter, put it into the sleeve of his coat, and went to Sasnowit gave the letter to my wife and gave me my wife's answer, said Demra in his survivor testimony at Yad Vashem dated February the 15th, 1973. Later on, I asked him again for a favor, to send my wife and my two children to Blachama. I shall bring them but not yet. Your children are still too young, said Ludwig. At that time, my son was 10 years, was 10, year, 10 years and a half, uh, daughter 11 and a half. But I shall remember, and when the time arrives, I shall help you, Ludwig said. When he came to the camp again, I reminded him and he said he had not forgotten his promise, and I will help you. Sosnovic, the ghetto, became Judenrein, from which Jews are excluded, and one morning at five o'clock, two SS men brought my wife and the children into the camp, Demra said, rescuing the children. In the summer of 1943, Blachama was used as a transit camp and played a key role in the selections of Jews of dispersed ghettos. Decisions were made about those deemed fit for work while others were deported to Auschwitz. In Blachama, there were 25 children aged between 10 and 12, including Demeris. The children were in a separate barracks. Demra felt all the children were in danger of being sent to the gas chambers at Auschwitz within the next few days. Demra went to see the supervisor of constructions named Mertens and explained the threat. Demra, how could I help you? I would like to, but how would it be possible? Mertens asked. You could, for instance, occupy the children. Find any occup occupation for them, Demra said. Mertens promised to think over the problem and come up come, and find out what could be done. I pointed out that there was not much time to be lost. One of the next few days that they would be taken, Demra said. The next day, Mertens came to the camp with the Lager Commandant, or head of the camp, and made a big fuss. I need some more workers. There are still some sick people who could work. Who else is there, asked Mertens. 
Then the people remaining in the camp were lined up. Among them were the children. What about them? Mertens asked. They are going away, transported somewhere, the lager commandant replied. But why? They are able to work. They are young. They have their meals without working. Let them work for me. There will be sufficient work, Mertens said. Next day, Demera collected the children and sent the 20 to 22 of them to the construction site. The older General Mertens came into one block where there were children, gave them rust nails and screws and some emery paper to take the rust away. No one needed the screws, no one needed the nails. Thus Mertens saved the 20 children, Demra remembered. The SS takes over Blachhammer. Juden Zwangsarbeitslager Blachhammer, Jewish forced labor camp Blachhammer, that opened in March 1942, existed until April 1944, when the SS took control as part of a reorganization. Blachhammer then became a satellite camp of Auschwitz. Blachhammer was the second largest subcamp of the Auschwitz concentration camp. The new subcamp of Auschwitz III or Monowitz was called Arbeitslager, labor camp, Blachhammer. SSA Hauptsturmführer Otto Grossmann was appointed the Blachhammer's first. Lagerführer. Immediately, the SS had the prisoners permanently tattooed on their forearms. The first 3,056 male prisoners of Blockhammer had tattoos of the Auschwitz numbers 176, 512 to 179, 567. Carl Demera was tattooed with prisoner number 176951. Joseph Gluckstein had number 177231. The first 132 female prisoners had numbers 76330 to 76461. Mimi Rubin was not tattooed. Women's tattoo numbers. Demra soon faced a serious problem concerning the women's tattoo numbers. There were then 102 women in the camp that were working at his intervention in the laundry and kitchen. The women, however, were to be sent away to Auschwitz and killed since they had been given earlier duplicate tattoo numbers that already existed in Auschwitz. By means of money and gold from hiding places, I succeeded in convincing the Lagerführer that the women were urgently, urgently needed and should be left in the camp, Demra stated in his testimony. The women were allowed to stay and got a second number on their hands. So that today, all these women have two numbers as far as with God's help, most of them are still alive, Demra said in 1973. Women sent to Peters Valdau. In April 1944, the SS gave orders to send away 100 of the 160 women then still at Blachhammer. Demra ordered all the women and girls to line up and asked who was willing to go. No one wanted to leave Blachhammer. They were screaming, raging, and weeping, Demra remembered. 
Demba knew there was only one way to make the hundred leave. He had to put his wife, Kenya, and daughter, Helena, at the top of the list to show that they would be all right. Soon, the remaining 100 and the remaining 98 women were on the list. My future mother, Mimi, Mimi Rubin, was among the 100 women. Although Demla was unaware of where the women were sent when they left, he later learned it was Peter Valsdow, a subcamp of the Gross Rosen concentration camp. Mimi remembered the women were taken from Lachhammer by train to Peter's Valdau castle and lodged. Women guards took away everything they had, including jewelry. They were allowed to keep one dress and one piece of underwear. Henya, Helena, Mimi, and the others were brought to Peter's Valdau to work in a nearby time bomb factory, making the timepieces for the bomb. Mimi was overjoyed to be, to be reunited with her sister Blanca when she learned she was at the camp. At seven o'clock a.m. each morning, the guards walked the women to the factory. They worked at the factory until dinner time when they were taken back to the castle to eat. Mimi remembered that the meal on Sunday wasn't bad. One meal was a tasty meat. However, they learned it was horse meat and everyone got sick the next day. On May 5th, 1945, a large contingent of Russian soldiers and tanks entered Peter's Valdau. Kenya, Mimi, Blanca, and the other women were liberated. The Blachhammer Death March. In November 1947, SS Hauptsturmführer Brussmann was replaced as the administrative head of Blachhammer by Untersturmführer Kurt Klipp. On January 21st, 1945, just days before the Soviet Red Army reached Auschwitz, Klipp evacuated from Blachhammer the men and remaining women. Several dozen prisoners who tried to hide during the evacuation were discovered and killed. Some 4,000 prisoners began a forced march that lasted 13 days. Carl Demra, his son, Henrik, and Joseph Gluckstein were among those on the march. Each prisoner got 800 grams of bread, a small portion of margarine, and artificial honey. Weak prisoners who did not keep up in the march were shot along the way. Some 800 prisoners were killed en route. On February 2nd, 1945, Carl, Henrik, Joseph, and the others reached the Gross Rosen concentration camp where they remained for five days before being put on a train on February 6th or 7th to Buchenwald. The train was attacked several times by Allied planes, causing numerous deaths. After a short stay at Buchenwald, the prisoners traveled to the Flossenburg and Dachau concentration camps. Long days and nights we were marching. It was still March and very cold. We had to sit down on the soil. My son was sick with fever 
and I had him in my arm to avoid the cold soil, Demra said. Eventually, Demra and his son were liberated in roving Germany, where his wife and daughter came with a Polish driver by car to meet them and take them home. Meeting Demra at war's end. Joseph Gluckstein was marched from Buchenwald to Austria. He and the others were liberated by the US 11th Armored Division at Lebenau near Salzburg. Following an attack of typhus and treatment by the American army, Joseph recovered and went to Heidelberg, Germany, where he lived. After learning that Mimi was alive and living in Czechoslovakia, Joseph asked her to come to Germany and they would marry. Since Russia occupied Czechoslovakia and closed the border, Mimi had to be smuggled into Germany by a Jewish organization. Once in Germany, Mimi was driven to Demra's home in Beirut, where he lived with Henya, Helena, and Heinrich. Joseph traveled from Heidelberg and was reunited with Mimi at the Demra's home. They returned to Heidelberg and married on March 11, 1947. Carl Demra immigrated to Israel in 1961 and kept in contact with survivors, including Joseph and Mimi. In 1973, he gave survivor testimony at Yad Vashem. Later that year, on December 19, 1973, Carl Demra passed away at age 72. Demra fondly remembered. Emanuel Weisblom from Begzin, Poland was in Blachhammer from September 1943 until January 1945. In his autobiography, My Destiny, Weisblom wrote that Carl Demra worked to protect his fellow inmates. On one occasion, Weiss Bloom was standing out of line when a German officer drew his gun. Demra stepped in and took control, flogging Weiss Bloom so that he wouldn't be shot. Weiss Bloom pretended to be in pain as Demra was not flogging him properly. Herman Langbein in his book People in Auschwitz wrote, Karl Demra, the Jewish camp leader of Blachhammer, who had been deported from Germany, has been generally praised. Maja Raz Skowrin affirms that when she was transferred to Blachhammer from another camp, in which a very bad Jewish elder had been in power, she thought she had come to a paradise. Gita Brandt Schulberg emphasizes that inmates who had mistreated their charges were removed at Demra's request. Motek Buchbinder wrote on August the 7th, 2007 in Together, the American Gathering of Jew Jewish Holocaust Survivors and the Descendants, the following. The Juden Altesta Karl Demra saved my life in Blachhammer. By pushing me to the right side of the selection process where the healthy people were standing, I was sheet metal mechanic and he needed one. I was born in Susnovic, Poland. Demma honored in 2018. The Karen Tamer Lisrael Jewish National Fund and World B'nai B'rith conducts an annual ceremony in Martyr's Forest 
a forest on the outskirts of Jerusalem. The joint ritual honors Jews who rescued other Jews during the Holocaust. In 2018, Minya Jonek, chairwoman of the Jewish congregation in Constant, Germany, received the Jewish rescuer citation on behalf of her grandfather, Carl Demler. At the ceremony, Demler was recognized for helping many of the inmates in Blachama and saving 100 women who the Germans wished to murder simply because they had been tattooed with duplicate numbers already given to other women. I am proud to receive the award in the name of my grandfather, Janik said. He was a modest man who did not like to talk about his deeds during the war. We, the members of his family, feel that it's very important to honor his memory and the memories of all the Jewish rescuers, Mrs. Janik said. Carl Demmer's heroism, courage, and devotion would always be remembered by those men, women, and children imprisoned with him at Blachama. Today, Demmer's actions on behalf of his fellow Jews are recognized as an extraordinary man's daring and resolution during one of the darkest periods in history. This completes my paper on Carl Demra. Thank you for inviting me to speak today. Can you hear me? Thank you very much, Fred. Yes, I think everyone's microphones is off. So I saw oh. some people applauding. It's uh, Zoom is always a sort of strange environment for these things, but it's wonderful that we're able to come together and 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 hear your lecture. Um, it's very moving. Um, and um, I would at this time um, open up the, the floor um, for for comments or questions, but maybe even before I do that, um, Minya, if there's anything that you would like to add, I would sort of uh, give you the the the, the option of of, of of saying or asking any questions, uh, and if not, then I would open up the floor for for questions. I, I just would like to say that some of the people gathered here were part of uh, giving my grandfather this honor. There is uh, Noah uh, from Israel, and she gathered all the information also about my grandfather. And uh, Mr. Vanea, he also was is in this organization who, who gives the honor to, to this, the people who, who, Jewish people who saved as a Jews, which is, an, I think, a very important thing. And uh, yes, and some of the people who meet here also wrote about uh, Karl Demmer and about Blechhammer. So uh, there are another two people here, Nina and Mel Leitner, who are uh, also writing about uh, all these things. And um, I want to thank you very much, Fred. It was very moving and very interesting. And uh, I would like people to now to, to ask questions and Rob will take the questions. Thank you. Yeah, if um, anyone would like to ask a question, um, you could simply put your uh, microphone on and speak um, if it becomes a little bit too many people at once, then I will uh, take some order. I think I see Tovia raising his hand. Is that correct, Tovia? Or yes, Tovia. Yes, please. Um, please put your microphone on, or maybe. Yeah. Is the microphone on? Yes. Now we can hear you. First of all, I want to congratulate the lecturer. We don't pay attention sufficiently to Jews who save Jews in the Holocaust. We always talk about the others 
who worked with the Nazis or the Nazis used them. And therefore I think your paper is so important despite it's a, a little difficult to follow all the details, but the details show how much each person that he helped was a whole world for him. But I have another question. Yeah. Why did it have to wait for the Karen Kayemet and for Bnei Brit to be awarded recognition? Where is Yad Vashem? There is something political there. Maybe I am uh, t touching a subject that you don't want to deal with. I will fully understand. But it smells a little strange that the man who did all that had to be awarded from another Karen Kayemet has nothing to do with the Holocaust. Karen Kayemet has to do with, with buying land in the land of Israel. And they usurped that subject because something was wrong there. And maybe you know more about it. And mm -hmm. the same thing I think is with Mebrit. Two Jewish organizations which don't have to, which are not, connected with the Holocaust, they give the recognition. And all those other Jewish organizations which are connected with the Holocaust are quiet. Um, if I may call you, Tovia? Yes, um, yes, of I, course. I don't have an answer to your question. I, I do know is that after I remembered the conversations I had with my mother, who's passed away, about, about the gentleman, um, it always occurred to me that there had to be a much bigger story there. And when I was fortunate enough to have access to the Holocaust Museum in Washington and the Yad Vashem and other places and other books, the story became clearer to me. Why Mr. Demerel was not praised or honored years earlier, I don't know, but he should have because he was a remarkable man who did remarkable work in my opinion. Uh, I, I will try to answer you. Uh, my name is Noah and as Minya said before, I am a member in the committee uh, for recognition of the heroism of Jews who rescued Jews during the Holocaust. And I joined this committee uh, about uh, seven years ago, but uh, the initiator was um, Chaim Roth, who is himself uh, is a survivor and was rescued by two people. Uh, one is uh, a right, uh, recognized by Yad Vashem as a writer uh, among the nation, and the other one was a Jewish. And he uh, is the one that began, began to talk uh, with Yad Vashem about this subject 20 years ago. And it was a, a big issue and a big struggle. And they tried to change the, the law in Israel for uh, memorizing the Holocaust. There is a, 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 such a law from... Uh, 1960, 90, and uh, one, there is a list uh, what Yad Vashem is uh, supposed to to deal with, and it re written all the ghetto fighters and the partisans and people who uh, fight with with guns because on that years. Uh, rescuing Jews uh, was not uh, recognized uh, as a uh, heroism. Uh, Israel was a, a young uh, nation and uh, they want to make uh, Israeli uh, image uh, as a young uh, guy with a gun with his hand. Um, things changed during the years and um, uh, after the second uh, uh, trial to, to change the law, something happened and we uh, began uh, sitting with uh, Yad Vashem uh, 
uh, manager and we had uh, we, we sat with them I think about uh, from three years or four years ago and last year if you uh, follow it this subject was a main uh, subject of uh, Yad Vashem this was a uh, Every year they, they pick up a, a subject, a, a central subject, and all the year is dedicated to that sub subject. And a lot of um, uh, material is collected. And if you enter the um, site of Yad Vashem, uh, you can find uh, uh, some, some, a lot of uh, material that they worked about last year. Uh, they didn't agree to uh, give citation to the Jews. Uh, writers of, among the nations, uh, by definition, cannot be a Jew. So it's supposed to be a, another definition, which is not defined by the law. And so we, but uh, they uh, did not, um, uh, forbid us to, to uh, give the citation to, to Jewish. And um, since uh, 2011 till today, uh, there are about 360 Jewish that were recognized by our committee. We are not, uh, all of us except one are volunteers. We, few, we do not have a lot of stuff like uh, Yad Vashem, so it goes a little bit uh, slowlier. The only one that is uh, a work uh, is um, uh, the lawyer uh, Alan Schneider, that is a manager of Bnei Brit, uh, uh, international Bnei Brit that sits in Jerusalem. And uh, once a year, he organized a central uh, ceremony, uh, like Minya said, next to Jerusalem, and Kakal is involved in, in it, but that's it. All the other uh, uh, activity uh, is done by our committee, our committee and Bnei Brit. So this is a story. Yad Vashem make, makes and especially Avner Shalev makes a very uh, big effort not to open uh, the law. After years, I can uh, imagine why he, he tried to open it, because there are a lot of uh, other groups that will try to enter through this uh, opening that were not recognized on that uh, law. So this is a situation. We have another meeting with uh, uh, Dorit Novak and the Yad Vashem uh, uh, staff in, in two weeks. And uh, things go together, but uh, it was a, a very important uh, for us that they uh, de de declared this subject as a main subject last year because it uh, gave a kind of leg legitimate to, to this subject to other uh, museums in is smaller museums in Israel that knew that uh, Avner Shalev is uh, against it, against this activity and uh, knew about our um, uh, struggle and when we when th things become calm and uh, legitimate, so now we, we uh, are uh, receiving more uh, cooperation from the smaller museums. Thank and you. Thank smaller... you, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to make, I just have to keep my eye a little bit on the clock. Um, okay, no, I <laughs> the full answer. I... <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, um, there's, of course, a, a lot that you can that you can tell about this. I just want to give enough time for, for other questions. Thank you very much, Noah. Uh, 
may I say something? Because I think it was very important for all these people like me and others who have family members who were not recognized uh, in, an, in, in a public way. Even so, my grandfather had a lot of rec recognition during his life by the inmates who met with him. And he, he was in, invited to, uh, on his 60th birthday, they gave him a big party. Uh, I, I wasn't there, uh, but uh, uh, around 150 people were there and all of them signed, uh, signed on, on, on a memory card, which I still have which I want to go to give to uh, the new museum, which the organization, uh, NOAA, uh, you, the new museum, which the organization is going to, to organize. Okay. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yes, please. Okay. I want to get back to Fred and uh, ask him, in first place, your report was very touching. And I guess reading it is not so easy uh, every time. Do you do you do this in the United States? Do you do this in New York or in Washington or wherever at schools? Do you go around and tell people about things that happened? I um, no, I haven't. I have spent a lot of time since I've retired <laughs> to do a lot of writing, but I have not gone out to make any kind of presentations on the theme on Demra and, and the story itself. So well, I have not. Maybe considering there will be a day I'll do that. Considering the uh, amounts of anti Semitism, not only in, in Europe, but in the United States also, um, is, isn't that important that people do this? Yes, it is. And um, you, make, you make an excellent point. And um, in fact, you know, thinking about what you said and probably down the road, I probably will try to do just that. There'd be no reason that I could not offer my ability to make this kind of lecture in different places. So I think you make a very good point. And it is important. Are there many people doing it? I mean, if you cannot do it, it's one thing, but is it well, done? Is it done? I guess it would depend. There are many different Jewish organizations in, in, in Manhattan and organizations on Long Island where I live. Um, so Nancy, question, I don't know how often it's been done, but it really would not stop me from making, you know, the offer to do that. So, you know, down the road, I, I think I will do that because you do make an excellent point. Okay. Anybody else? More questions? Nobody has questions? Albert Wilner. Uh, he's, he's, he's raising his hand, uh, but he's... Uh, Rob, could you uh, get Albert Wilner to his microphone? Because he was ri raising his hand. Okay. Let's see. Okay. I, I, is this microphone open now? I just yes, it's open now. Okay, great. Tofi yeah. Alete. Mr. Wilner, did you want to ask something? Who is Mr. Wilner? I had an idea you. <laughs> okay. And Tovia? And I also see Patrick Leber. And I have to wait for Robert. And Mel Leitner. To yeah. Toby, Toby, I'm sorry. I'm going to grab someone else uh, because you already asked a question. But you're going to get your turn to come back, OK? I hope that's OK with you. I see Patrick Leber and Mel Leitner raising their hands. Um, Mel, why don't you go ahead? Your microphone is open now. OK. Um, I feel a little funny doing this because I don't want to be accused of uh, self-promotion, but we're here talking about Blechhammer and uh, uh, Carl Demera, and I have a book that is being published in September 
It's this one here. This is an advanced reader copy, but it's coming out in September, which is about my father. And uh, uh, much of it is set in Blechhammer. And much of it, and Carl Demereau, of course, is then a central character. And the uh, testimony that uh, Mr. Gluckstein uh, used for his uh, papers are woven into the book and some others as well, and some other uh, testimonials as well, and information about uh, the camp, which, which as Mr. Gluckstein pointed out, was the largest exclusively Jewish uh, labor camp within the Auschwitz archipelago of camps. And um, uh, I understood from my reading of one of uh, um, Demerer's uh, English translated testimonials that it wasn't that he worked for a bank, but he worked for an insurance company in Sustanich. And uh, uh, he was, and, and one of the reasons that he was picked is because he was very good with numbers and reporting and doing the type of work that uh, the organization Schmelt, which ran Lechhammer as one of its <coughs> before it became a uh, sub of the uh, uh, needed and ran. And of course, uh, uh, the, uh, that, that uh, German uh, uh, captain was working for organization Schmelt indirectly. Anyway, the uh, Demerer and, uh, and, and, and Blechhammer in general, uh, the more you learn about the camp, the more you, you realize that it, it changes your, unless you're really, really deep in the woods, in the, in the high weeds about the subject, it, it opens up your eyes to a very different type of uh, reality of what a labor camp was like. The uh, amount of uh, black market trading going on is, is incredible. Uh, packages being sent in and out. There's uh, uh, there's evidence on uh, in the uh, Holocaust Museum of uh, of one French prisoner who had 50, 60 packages being mailed to him from his daughter and friends in Paris. His daughter was hiding in Paris, and he sent out, and they used. Uh, French contract laborers from the other camps, because the uh, refinery, of course, had many thousands of workers. I think people here may know this. Many thousands of workers, including about 2,000 British POWs, uh, French workers, Italian workers, Czech workers, and they were all in camps. That entire area of Blechhammer uh, was one big staging ground of camps. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. Um, and uh, I'm available if anybody needs any more information. Well, thank you. I look forward to getting a copy of your book. It's available on pre-sale at Amazon right now, <laughs> and uh, you can order it early. If, okay. I can, if I can determine that it was an insurance company and not a bank, and I'll go back to check my records on where the bank came from, but if it's an insurance company, I'd like to change my, my paper. I'm, I'm going to look up the... Uh, I still have a chance to make one of the, the final corrections are due for the final proofs on June 18th. So I'm gonna go back and look at the, uh, the English translate, the, the copy that I made when I was at Yad Vashem, where I got that. I, I'm pretty sure I got it right, but hey, you know, you know, I was a reporter for about 20 years. And uh, the point of the book was, uh, can I, Robert, am I, going overboard here, I, I don't. Um, I, I do want to get to other people. There go are ahead, people go ahead. I, this, is, this is away from the, uh, the subject, I apologize. Uh, thank, you, thank you very much. Um, um, Tovia and then Ingrid. I make it very brief. I think there are some hidden problems which are not the subject of tonight the political aspects, which organizations stand behind the different heroes, the political life of Israel prior to the um, state of Israel, 
because they divided, they never worked together. Each group worked separately. And that's why I think it also penetrated in the memory. The other point that Israel at the beginning needed heroes and therefore they talked about the Holocaust day, Yom HaShoah HaGvura, the day of the Holocaust and heroism. They needed those heroism. We don't understand this today anymore. For people who were so um, emotionally hit and suddenly they are there, they needed some heroes. So the political life penetrated unfortunately also into that subject, which is not our subject tonight. And I think the lecturer did a fantastic job to us to show once which is done so seldomly, and they are very thankful to you, how mm -hmm. Jews helped other Jews. Not how Jews used other Jews, but how Jews helped other Jews without being partisans, without having weapons. That's, I think, something which is still new for us. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Thank you very much, um, Ingrid. I believe you have a question. Yes, OK, hello. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Glickstein, for your report. And I have a question. Are you able to reach also the young generation in the United States for this very important topic generally? Listen um, to these kind of um, reports you are doing. Well, this report on Mr. Demra is one of the, it's one example, yeah. One, one of the few that I've written with, with the Jewish background. Most of the, the writing that I've done has taken place within writing about Winston Churchill and publishing those um, and other types of work. So Arthur Conan Doyle I've written about. Um, and there've been some other presentations on sporting events that I've written about on American baseball, but I have not made any presentations, as I mentioned to the other lady, to any Jewish organizations on this particular work, which is really, um, I guess, the major piece of work I've done. But as I mentioned, I'm certainly going to look into that. But no, I have not been able to reach out to others. But yes, you are right. It is important to be done by myself in this particular case, and I'm sure many, many others. Because even for you, it took time. You got the memory of your mother, of your parents until you start to write down all these things you're you so and i think it's not so easy to get it in a flow that it still exists right it, it's yeah. continued to exist and not to forget and to remember uh and thank you very much i appreciate it very much well thank you very much thank you mm -hmm. um rob yes could you take Albert Wilner's question, he wrote it. Oh, um, okay, let me check the chat. Okay, yes, I can read that. Is the, your microphone not work or do you not want to? Um, okay. The microphone I'll, didn't work. Okay, then I'll just read it. It says, uh, thank you for your excellent presentation. In 2020, I and others retraced the death march from Black Hammer to Gross Rosen. During background research for TRIP, I found notes related to Blechhammer in many places in Poland, the US, France, Israel. Blechhammer, 1944, organization in Blachownia, Poland, is doing great work. Question, is there consideration being given to place all Demerer-related information in one place for future research? Well, I think I probably would you know, ask Ninya to answer that question. I think it would be a wonderful idea. But I personally, I'm, I'm unaware that anything is being considered like that. But maybe Ninya could, could talk about that. Um, I just know that there is a, this is the only thing I know about uh, uh, Poland, that there is a new museum or some place where all the information about Blechhammer is gathered. We had some person from there, Mr. Haduch, who 
wrote uh, to me and uh, I, I, I plan to go there uh, in the summer if possible, uh, but more I don't know. I mean, you find a lot of information in a lot of places, that's true. And I also uh, talked to a lot of the survivors uh, some years ago and it was always uh, very memorable. And Mel probably talked to a lot of survivors too. Yes. So, uh, by the way, yes. I've been to Blechhammer three times uh, and Edward and I, Edward Hadush, uh, he, he's that Polish, he's a remarkable young man. He took it on himself to uh, actually do a, uh, uh, a presentation at his community library about Blechhammer. He did, and he and a friend put together, and I, you can still find it online, a sort of uh, video three-dimensional animation of what the camp was like. And it stops at different points where you see a photograph of what it looks like today and a photograph of what it looked like from uh, archival photographs. Now, uh, Mr. Gluckstein, I found the uh, part of the testimonial, which is Carl Demmerer part two, in which he does say that uh, he worked for a while um, Oh boy, I don't want to keep it up, but he did work for a while at an insurance company. Okay. I can, uh, Is that I can get that to you. I'll get that to you afterwards. Oh, okay, thank you. Right. Thank you very much for checking. By the way, um, there is a Blechhammer organization. There was a Blechhammer organization in Paris, and this organization also had a lot of. Uh, um, pictures and how the camp looks like. You can go into the, this uh, uh, museum in Paris and there is uh, the same information, I think. Uh, may I just ask everybody, we recorded, now it was recorded up to now, the whole talk. And this is, uh, it shouldn't be like that. We should stop after the presenter. So is everybody agreeable if, if, if this will stay like that? Or the people who talked? Is there any problem with that? I have no problem. No problem. Well, okay. I, I think we can cut it. I mean, we, we can cut the, uh, the, try to cut the, the Aufnahme. Es kann, man kann es bearbeiten. So, ja, aber wenn I, I turn it off now, please, Rob. I okay. forgot also. Right. Okay. The learning with Zoom. <laughs> 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 we should know better by now, but we don't do it that often. Right. So are there any questions? You can also ask your questions in German and we'll try